My name is Peter Tork. I was born in Washington, D.C. in 1942. I used to belong to the Muckies, and I'm a raconteur and a musician and a bon vivant and a man about town. Well, I don't think it's, I don't think there is such a thing as perfect happiness. You muddle along and you get a little happier as the drag, you know what I mean? I'm pretty happy right now. I would say my greatest fear was cosmological disintegration and excruciating agony. Nothing much, I don't fear very much. Besides Pete Seeger, there's not too many that I admire a great deal. I mean, a lot of people that I admire a great deal. None that I, I don't think any I admire as much as him. Because as a musician, he swung, and as a social person, he stood up. The characteristic I most dislike in myself is my lack of concentration. Some have called me ADD. My sister thinks I have ADD. and. Uh, by the way, you want to go riding on a bike? Uh, the characteristic I have the most trouble with in other people is uh, abusiveness, loud abusiveness. That one stops me cold. I don't know how to cope with that. What am I excessive about? Sudoku. I'm, I'm excessive about Sudoku. I'll get over that one of these days. I think the most overrated virtue, generally speaking, in the population, the most overrated virtue is piety. Displays of piety. People go on, look how pious I am, and I think that that's, I, that's not only overrated, but dangerous, really. The most satisfaction in life every day comes from being useful. I've been working really hard, gaining a lot of understanding, and when somebody else can use it, I'm, I'm a happy camper. That's besides the music, of course. That's all beside them, which is where it all comes from to begin with. But you're talking about the daily person, interpersonal stuff being of use. There are no particular rewards I would like. You know, Oscars and Grammys and Emmys, those things are fine, but I'm not playing the games and you can't win if you don't play. So I don't know about anything, maybe a Grammy if the record was really fabulous and went places, but that's just incidental. The real rewards are just to, to be able to play music. That's, that's it, just allow me to play music in front of some people that might enjoy it and I'm a happy camper, that's all I ever needed. I'd never experienced a fork in the road until my 40s. When I first started off, I remember being an entertainer at four. I remember being self-aware as an entertainer at four. I didn't actually think that I was going to be an entertainer. I just became one through the course of events. I was in Greenwich Village and they were playing on the coffee houses and I picked up my banjo and went and played. And that was all I knew. I didn't have any sense of, I'll be an entertainer, I'll play music. I just did it. And I thought that I was letting my life lead me on. Finally, when I was 40, I went, I could make a choice and become dedicated. I didn't become dedicated till then. A lot of entertainers will tell you that. It didn't become dedicated till much later. I think right now, my most treasured possession is my house. I recently moved into the house my parents moved us to when I was 13. It's a pre-revolutionary war colonial house in Connecticut, and it is really something to behold. I might actually keep places in New York and Paris and San Francisco. Where I am right now in Connecticut is a wonderful part of the world as well. So, But New York for the energy, San Francisco for the energy and the beauty, Paris, just because it's a Paris, you know. Uh, I lie under two circumstances. One is in the greater good, because there's sometimes when lies, when the honesty is not a good thing to do. And sometimes out of just screaming, gibbering terror. What challenges me the most? Right now, it's actually the onslaught of the years. That is proving to be a big deal. As Betty Davis said, accruing the years, it's not for sissies. This one's a bear. Uh, the lowest depth of a despair is the conviction that I'm all alone, that there is no help. There's no help, no hope. That's it. Boy, that, put, that just about put me away when I was 13. If you're asking me what talents I would like to have some of, there are any number of talents, you know, tact. I'd love to have tact for a talent. That would be really great. Consistency. There's a lot of things that I slip and slide around on, but for the most part, I kind of like the hand I got dealt. There are no particular rewards I would like. You know, Oscars and Grammys and Emmys, those things are fine, but I'm not playing the games and you can't win if you don't play. So I don't know about anything, maybe a Grammy if the record was really fabulous and went places, but that's just incidental. The real rewards are just to, to be able to play music. That's, that's it, just allow me to play music in front of some people that might enjoy it and I'm a happy camper, that's all I ever needed. If I had any other careers, I was thinking of law at one point, and I thought psychotherapy, thought I might be good at that, because I've worked so hard on my own sanity. <laughs> I can't 
can't imagine even ditch digging. I mean, handling a backhoe, that'd be pretty cool. I can't think of anything I wouldn't like to do particularly. You know, if you told me that was my gig and that, you know, make a decent living and have a family as well at it, I can't think of anything that I really wouldn't want to do particularly. As the years have rolled by, I've come to appreciate it. I think fairly, it wasn't the Beatles, but there was a very important aspect to that whole time in the movement. And the Monkees TV show brought it through television and to those who otherwise might not have heard it. And it was this, it was a, a time that might've been thought of as anarchic. But the reason for that was that there was no authority worth paying attention to. Johnson and Nixon were the presidents, and, and they were bogus. They were absolutely without moral authority, and we were thrown on our own. The characters on that situation comedy were without authority, without adult figure. We did it ourselves because we had to, because you couldn't count on Johnson and Nixon. Echoes of the present age. Escaping the, the hell and misery of drugs and alcohol. Being human, it's, it's an amazing thing. You know, it's not an easy thing. It's a scary business, and uh, having the help and the hope makes it doable just being here now. I think we're all here for the same purpose. Uh, there's a Zen master who addressed his, his crowd as bodhisattvas, meaning everybody's come back just to show the way. Everybody is here to show the way. So there's no difference among us. I, there's no karmic scaling here. There's no better or worse, you know. Actually, the basic thing that keeps me safe and secure is no distractions. As long as nobody's in my face or jumping around or, you know, I'm in any kind of particular danger, I'm pretty safe and secure all the time. I guess I feel a little bit more of that on a massage table. I was uh, doing an interview once and they asked me if there's any last words I wanted to do and I said, be a hero to yourself. And it, it kind of just popped out of my mouth. But the more I think about it, the more I like it, the more real it becomes to me. Being a hero to yourself means that one, me, you, is in charge of one's own life. There's so much goes on, people say, who do you think you are? And who I think I am is who I really think I am. And I get to operate from that basis and not on the basis of what you want from me or what you think is better for me to be or do. I know that what you want from me is important to you, but it doesn't constitute an emergency on my part. I get to be a hero to myself, I recommend it. Top thing on my lifetime list to do is to uh, make it as a blues pop musician on my own. <laughs>